The term Green Revolution refers to the renovation of agricultural practices beginning in Mexico in the 1940s. Because of its success in producing more agricultural products there, Green Revolution technology spread worldwide in the 1950s and 60s, significantly increasing the amount of calories produced per acre of agriculture. The beginnings of the Green Revolution are often attributed to Norman Borlaug, an American scientist interested in agriculture. In the 1940s, he began conducting research in Mexico and developed new disease resistance high yield varieties of wheat. By combining Borlaug's wheat varieties with new merchandise agricultural technologies, Mexico was able to produce more wheat than what was needed by its own citizens, leading to its becoming an exporter of wheat by the 1960s. Prior to the use of these varieties, the country was importing almost half of its wheat supply. Due to the success of the Green Revolution in Mexico, its technology spread worldwide in the 1950s and the 1960s. The United States, for instance, imported about half of its wheat in the 1940s, but after using Green Revolution technologies, it became self-sufficient in the 1950s and became an exporter by the 1960s. In order to continue using Green Revolution technologies to produce more food for a growing population worldwide, the Rockefeller Foundation and the Ford Foundation, as well as many government agencies around the world, funded increased research. In 1963, with the help of this funding, Mexico formed an international research institution called the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center. Countries all over the world in return benefited from the Green Revolution work conducted by Borlaug and the research institution. India, for example, was on the brink of mass famine in the early 1960s because of its rapidly growing population. Borlaug and the Ford Foundation then implemented research there and they developed a new variety of rice, IRA, that produced more grain per plant when grown with irrigation and fertilizers. The crops developed during the Green Revolution were high yield varieties, meaning they were domesticated plants bred specifically to respond to fertilizers and produce an increased amount of grain per acre planted. The terms often used with these plants that have made them successful are harvest index, photosynthetic al allocation, and insensitivity to day length. The harvest index refers to the above ground weight of the plant. During the Green Revolution, plants that had the largest seeds were selected to create the most production as possible. After selectively breeding these plants, they evolved to all have the characteristic of larger seeds. These larger seeds then created more grain yield and a heavier above ground weight. The larger above ground weight then led to an increased photosynthate allocation by maximizing the seed or food portion of the plant. It was able to use photosynthesis more efficiently because the energy produced during this process was directly to the food portion of the plant. Since fertilizers are largely what made the Green Revolution possible, they forever changed agricultural practices because the high yield varieties developed during this time cannot grow successfully without the help of fertilizers. Irrigation also played a large role in the Green Revolution and this forever changed the areas where various crops can be grown. For instance, before the Green Revolution, agriculture was severely limited to areas with a significant amount of rainfall. But by using irrigation, water can be stored and sent to drier areas, putting more land into agricultural production, thus increasing nationwide crop yields. In addition, the development of high yield varieties meant that only a few species of, say, rice started being grown. In India, for example, there were about 30,000 rice varieties prior to the Green Revolution. Today there are around 10, all the most productive types. By having this increased crop homogeneity, though the types were more prone to disease and pests because there were not enough varieties to fight them off. In order to protect these few varieties then, pesticide use grew as well. Finally, the use of Green Revolution technologies exponentially increased the amount of food production worldwide. Along with the benefits gained from the Green Revolution, there have been several criticisms. The first is that the increased amount of food production has led to overpopulation worldwide. The second major criticism is that places like Africa have not significantly benefited from the Green Revolution. The major problems surrounding the use of these technologies here, though, are a lack of infrastructure, governmental corruption, and insecurity in the nations. The spread of Green Revolution agriculture affected both agricultural biodiversity and wild biodiversity. There is little disagreement that the Green Revolution acted to reduce agricultural biodiversity, as it relied on just a few high-yield varieties of each crop. 
This has led to concerns about the susceptibility of a food supply to pathogens that cannot be controlled by agrochemicals, as well as the permanent loss of many valuable genetic traits bred into traditional varieties of over a thousand years. To address these concerns, massive seed banks have been established. There are varying opinions about the effect of the Green Revolution on wild biodiversity. One hypothesis speculates that by increasing production per unit of land area, agriculture will not need to expand into new, uncultivated areas to feed a growing human population. However, land degradation and soil nutrients depletion have forced farmers to clear up formerly forested areas in order to keep up with production. The consumption of the pesticides used to kill pests by humans in some cases may be increasing the likelihood of cancer in some of the rural villages using them. Poor farming practices, including non-compliance to usage of masks and overusage of the chemicals, compound this situation. In the regions inhabited by the majority of humanity, most land suitable for agriculture is already being farmed. Significant areas that could be opened up for agriculture do exist in Africa and Latin America, but most are covered by forests. Converting them for agriculture would take heavy toll on indigenous forest dwellers, as well as on the forest and savanna vegetation and biological diversity. The new green revolution draws on the best of the technologies that have doubled production over the past 30 years. At the same time, it emphasizes alternative approaches and improved farm management and information systems in order to minimize environmental damage from external inputs and benefit poor farmers in marginal areas bypassed by the original Green Revolution.